okay, I don't know what's going on, but I'm having the day of my life. And, and, you know, Alex, do not waste this opportunity. This is, this is, things are going well. Don't, don't, don't pass up this moment. So I, I stopped listening to the splits and just put my head down and, and ran. And I, and I ended up crossing the line in 352, wow. um, which was a nine second personal best after four years of being Jeez, stuck at crazy. the same level. I'd, I'd been a finalist at the Canadian Olympic trials in 1996 when I was, uh, 20. Uh, and then that injury I was discussing when, in, when I was, uh, you know, 23, 24, uh, that kept me out of the 2000 Olympic trials. In fact, I did. Oh. So I, I was injured in 98 and 99 and just starting to run again in 2000. And I qualified for the Olympic trials, but I wasn't going to be competitive. So I, I didn't bother going cause I just needed to sort of build back, build, start building my fitness back up. Yeah. So I missed the two, 2000 trials. Then in 2004, I was finally in the shape of my life. And then I got this stress fracture three months before oh. the example that my parents gave me or the, the expectations that my parents set was that I, I grew up with the idea that being outside and playing was a positive thing that they imp- uh, uh, really approved of. Mm. And so I, I knew if, if they came home and I was outside throwing a ball against the wall, uh, against the garage door, which is what I spent a lot of time doing, pretending I was a pitcher, um, <laughs> they wouldn't interrupt me. They wouldn't call me in and make me do chores if I was outside playing. Whereas if I was inside sitting on TV, you knew I was going to be up, you know, helping chopping something for, for dinner. Yes, and, so. and ultimately what I realized, you know, after a lot of reflection was that I, I really enjoyed running. I really enjoyed, um, the process of training of, of having a goal, even if that goal was probably unattainable, but a goal that was not a hundred percent unattainable. And that was all consuming was really difficult that demanded everything of myself. So I liked the physical aspect of, of being fit. I liked training. I also just, I liked the, the sense of being committed of, of trying to do something really hard. In the book, I think what the book is, is um, it's an attempt to understand what defines our limits in, in, in different contexts, where you, when, you, when you reach the point where you can't go any faster or you can't go any farther or you can't maintain your pace for any longer, what is it that holds you back? Uh, basically crack uh, the, the encryption that's used in all internet transactions and a lot of security. So that's why the NSA was interested in it. No one has built a, a, a you know a fully functioning full-scale quantum computer that can do this even now. But if someone builds one, they'll more or less immediately be able to read a, a large fraction of 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 classified information these days. And so for, from the NSA's perspective, they need to know that the messages they send in 2018 aren't going to be decrypted in 2020 or 2030 even they need to look ahead wow. and say what's what's possible in the future so just an incredible performance and it was it ended up being just this absolutely transcendent performance and and it was it was quite interesting because there were so many people who were so critical of it uh who nonetheless got up and watched you know the streaming in the middle of the night and a lot of people were grudgingly converted to the idea that okay that that was pretty cool